Ed, as the days tick closer to the derby, Epsom Classic success is something that's synonymous with the Dunlop family, it's fair to say. But um, for you personally, as John Leeper gets ready for Epsom, what's the, the personal sensation like at the moment? Well, there was probably more pressure going into the listed race, to be honest, because we wanted them to be decent. Um, and hopefully Newmarket showed that. Um, but yeah, I know there's, you know, having a horse named after one's father, it puts a bit more pressure on it, I can tell you. He's got the pedal, we will come to that. But um, this is obviously a very key thing because Epsom's so idiosyncratic, as you know, and you've supported this, this workout before. How key was it for this fellow, John Leeper, to come here and try the track? Look, he, didn't, he won pretty recently, so we weren't coming here to learn anything fitness-wise. We were purely coming here to educate him on the track. Um, unfortunately for everyone, the ground is very soft, so most of the horses are going pretty slowly, obviously. But uh, I didn't worry us. Michael Tebbett did a great job on my old lead horse, Amazing Red, and it, um, he seemed to go around there very well. What I liked the most of all of it was that we were always going to go slowly, but he was very relaxed going slowly in behind because there was always the concern in the back of one's mind that he did get a little bit lit up in a slowly run race at Newmarket. So I'm thrilled to see him behave so well today. Was it important to build rapport between the new jockey and the horse as well? Probably. Yeah. Um, um, you know, he's ridden him at home um, and he obviously rode Mummy. So, um, so that's the connection. So, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll leave it in Adam's hands. He's riding very well at the moment. So. Um, I hope he's excited to be riding him. He did look quite buzzed up afterwards as well. He'd obviously sat on Saffron Beach, a, a lively candidate for the Oaks as well, so he's got two very good chances. But um, you mentioned Mummy. Um, it would be extraordinary, and it hasn't been missed by many, that Ouija Board wins the Oaks and produces the Derby winner Australia, and then worse no fairy to win the Oaks as she did and produce a Derby winner. That would, would be pretty special, wouldn't it? Pretty rare as well, I think. Yeah, no, it would be very special. Um, there's a long way to go. The Irish have got a domination at the moment by the looks of things. Um, but um, he doesn't know that. But um, yeah, it would be very special to, if, if um, he was able to do it. Just going back to the memories of Snow Fairy, of course, she, she won that huge payday, supplemented in 2010. Um, and the career that she had there after Globetrotting was spectacular. She had such toughness. Has he got any of that from her, do you think? Or is it difficult to know at this early stage? He's a baby. I mean, he's not literally a baby. He's a huge baby. But um, he's done so little so far, and this is coming very quickly. Obviously, it's hard for us to tell. He's he eats, he sleeps, he does his work. He doesn't worry. Um, he's clean-winded um, for a big horse, and he's intelligent. So he's got the right qualities um, and the right pedigree. It's now up to him. <laughs> He's actually having a bit of a wash now. He was having a wash a moment or two earlier. But um, you, you talked about the new market race, which was, of course, a week and a half or so ago, three weeks out from the derby, but it was an important test. I gather it was quite a difficult watch for, the, for, for your wife as well. She found it quite difficult to watch it on the big screen. Am I right in saying? Apparently, yes. <laughs> Apparently. She, uh, look, it was, because it was a fast school race, they went so slowly. It looked like we were going to be in trouble. But I thought William was brilliant on him. Yeah. Just decided that this horse needed to, edu to be educated by getting on with it. And when he met the rising ground, he, he got on with it again. And, uh, and the cameras probably didn't notice it, but it took a very long time to pull him up. And with that in mind, and um, we are standing here in pretty much autumnal conditions, we're less than two weeks away now from the derby. Given that he's going to be going over the mile four here, what would you like to see weather-wise over the next week and a half, say? Beautiful ground, really. I yeah. mean, I think he handles slow ground. He's proved it today. He said he loved it. Um, I don't want very fast ground um, for a big horse, but um, we'll take what we get. But I'd be surprised if it dried up massively, considering how heavy it is today. But we know what the downs are like. They can dry quickly. But I think we've got more rain for the rest of most of this week and then probably a dry week. So it should be beautiful ground for everyone. Would there be, from the family perspective, to be able to put your name after your father's on the, the Derby Roll of Honour, would that, would that resonate even more? on a big day. Of course. For, for me, it's the pinnacle of being a British trainer, winning the English Derby. I read recently that some young trainers possibly think it isn't, but um, I'm pretty surprised by that. Um, this is the greatest test of a thoroughbred. Um, we'll walk the track as normal. I think the best I've done is three-fifths from probably four or five runners, so um, let's hope we can do better. And just last, with, with your father, what was he like when it came to training a, a key colt going into the Derby? Obviously, he knew what it was like to win, but um, I mean, at this stage, would have you, even with the experience that you've got and the winning success, would you have been asking him for advice or his thoughts, you know, key race thoughts going into the big day? I think he would be, he would be pretty amused 
embarrassed and surprised that there's a horse being named after him. But um, with it having been done, he would definitely be offering advice, which we would have taken. He would have been pretty unflappable and relaxed about it all, as he was with so many of his good horses. And um, yeah, it's, it, it will be a very emotional day. We've got to get there yet. Um, and I mustn't forget um, at the end of the interview that it wouldn't have been possible without the owner. Uh, Mrs. Patino has been an incredible owner for all my brothers here, for me, but importantly for my father. And I wouldn't be training for her and I wouldn't have had this horse if it wasn't for her. And she's always dreamed of having a runner in the derby. Um, with a chance and she she dreamed up naming him after my father so I hope we, we don't let her down.